welcome to The Prophetic Edge. My name is Larry Sparks and I'll be your host. And the reason that we need to hear God's voice, His prophetic voice, is so that you and I can have the edge of victory in our everyday life. Well, I've got my friend here, Ryan Bruss, and what a history with God you have. I mean, Ryan's a producer for Sid Roth's at Supernatural, church planter, pastor, but I was just thinking, what a history you have with revival. And you've seen God move in powerful ways. You worked with Steve Hill of the Brownsville Revival. Can you share one of perhaps the most profound, powerful memories you have of being in the Brownsville Revival? Uh, well, if, if I may, the uh, Brownsville Revival was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to say the least. But when I was in Spain with Steve once, yeah, yeah. there had to be 2,000 people there. I mean, it was incredible that the, the whole atmosphere buzzed with that revival, that, that, that feeling of the, the glory, the presence, yeah. everything was just buzzing. And in Spain, Steve preached the gospel like he always did, and, and it was awesome. And then he prayed for every single person, which it was a habit of his to pray for everybody in the building. Yeah. He prayed for every single person, all 2,000 people. My friend and I that were traveling with Steve, we looked back. Everybody was on the ground. Wow. After an hour and a half, two hours, everybody, they were violently being thrown through the air. There wow. was some kind of impartation. After all the people were prayed for, it, it would look like everybody was mowed down by the presence of God. Wow. He carried that revival in him wherever he went. Wow. It didn't matter. I was at a church with uh, Steve Hill once yeah, yeah. in South Texas, and there was about a thousand people in the church, and this is no joke. Everybody came to the altar except one. One guy was standing. Mm -hmm. I guess he was the holiest guy out of them all. <laughs> he didn't need to go. He didn't need to go. Uh, but you know how Steve was. Everybody needed to go to the altar because yeah, yeah. you want to stay clean before yeah. God. And uh, everybody came to the altar. Everybody repenting. Everybody crying out to God. And it was just, it was amazing. But the Brownsville Revival, I went to the Brownsville Revival saved. Yeah, yeah. But it set me on fire. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And when I walked in there, if you, when you would move the chairs for the altar call, even that was a holy moment. Yeah, yeah. I remember how holy it was just to move the chairs so so somebody could get saved. Yeah, yeah. And the fear of the Lord was in the place. It was awesome. But it's interesting. What you said about Steve Hill, though, that struck me, because you have this book about carrying the kingdom, carrying yes. the presence of God, bringing the kingdom of God wherever we go. And you said this about Steve Hill, that he carried revival wherever he went. I feel the presence of the Lord on that. So do I. Because here's the deal. I know you, Ryan, and what I love about you, and I remember you sending me this book, and you're like, Larry, Larry can you just take a look at it? <laughs> I read it. This is just my little testament. I was in the airport. I was in a Starbucks line, and there was a lady sitting in a wheelchair. Mm. And, you know, here I am, you know, host, prophetic edge, publisher yeah. of Destiny Image, but it's one of those things I'm like, God, am I carrying the presence where I go? Am I taking risk? Am I being bold? I remember as a result, the impartation I got for looking through that manuscript. Wow. I actually went up to this lady and I just started talking to her. I said, well, let me pray for you. And I just, I just prayed. I encouraged her. But I recognized, wow, it's easy to carry the presence. It's easy for you and I, for every believer, for all of you watching. Steve Hill, obviously, we think of the revivalists. We think of Steve Hill. We think of John Carroll Arnett and Bill Johnson and Heidi Baker. And they're amazing. But it is possible for all of us to carry revival. What does that look like? If you're born again, you carry the presence of God. That's yeah. the bottom line. So the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is within us. Yes. Jesus said that himself. So when you walk in to get a cup of coffee somewhere, the kingdom just walked in. Wow. This studio right here, if you're born again, the healing presence is here. Shoot. The joy of the Lord is here. The peace of God is here, all because the kingdom is within. Let me tell you a story that yeah, happened the yeah, other day. Yeah. So I went to go get some coffee. Uh, and the lady behind the counter looked like she wanted to beat me up. She it, just had this mad look. What did you face. say to her, Ryan? Well, listen, my flesh wanted to <laughs> get my coffee and go. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was making the coffee with a scowl on her face, yeah. and she was just her eyebrows, you know. And so I, I, I get my coffee, and I'm about to take it away. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to give in to the flesh. I said, ma'am, are you okay? And she goes, I'm, I'm fighting, my, I have a uh, migraine. I, wow. I fight migraines. I thought, well, that's why you're, you're, you're mean. <laughs> it's not because you're just mean, it's because yeah, you yeah, got migraines. dealing with something. And I said, can I pray for you? And I grabbed her hand and I prayed for her. And she goes, I feel tingly. That <laughs> was her words. I, mean, I feel tingly. That's I said, story. man, that's the presence of God. But what about the headache? She goes, it's gone. Come on. The migraine's gone. So I went back there the next day to, to see her. She runs and grabs her friend and says, this is the guy, this is a guy, this, yeah. you know, my headaches are gone, you got to meet this guy. And, and that's what happens everywhere you go. But in the, like in the book, I teach that you don't just bring the presence to your work or to, to the streets or whatever. Yeah. 
bring the kingdom to your children. Yeah. When you so pray good. for them when they go to bed at night, when they wake up in the morning, as you're, that Bible talks about that. Yeah, you know, yeah. training your children or your spouse, so your husband, your wife, bringing the kingdom wherever you go is, is just releasing the yeah. presence uh, everywhere you go. And it's that easy. You know, it's interesting as I think about the concepts that you explore in the book, number one, the kingdom's already here. Yes, I know exactly. a day is coming back when a day comes when Jesus comes back and the kingdom will come in its fullness, but we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And it's interesting because I was thinking, how did Paul pray? Because I know sometimes in our revival culture, we're, we pray almost like God needs to send the Holy Spirit again. Right. You know, and we don't need a Holy Spirit 2.0. Right. We no, already no, got it. But as you're sharing, here's what I'm thinking. You know what Paul prayed? He prayed, open my eyes. Yes. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my understanding that I might know, that I might grasp what I've already received. That sounds like what you're talking about. The same Holy Spirit that was in Acts chapter 2 is here in this room right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And what, what seemed like revival and people drunk in the spirit, that same Holy Spirit is here in this room. Yeah, release that to the people who are and watching. Father, in Jesus' name, oh, because I feel it here with Larry. I do too. It, I, I want you, wherever you're at, unless you're driving, lift up your hands <laughs> and just say, Lord, fill me with the wow. Holy Spirit. The More Bible Lord. says in John 7 that there, there's a river within you, and you just release that river right yes. now to, uh, uh, Lord, say, Lord, send me the Holy Spirit. Yes. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and let that release, I pray that release of the Holy Ghost just come on you right, right now in Jesus' name, wherever you are, I pray that the very presence of God yeah. will come and overshadow you, would heal you, would set you free, will deliver you. I'm yes. telling you, friend, I feel that. I, I feel the too. presence of God <laughs> ministering to you right now. I feel like the Lord is saying, when you have that encounter, it's never just to feel something, although no. that's great. It, it's never just for a dramatic effect, although that's powerful. When we have an encounter, I almost feel like, Ryan, it reminds us of how easy it is to bring him, like you did with the lady who, dealing with her migraine, yes, yeah. it's easy because ultimately it's Jesus's job to do the healing. Yes, it's Jesus's right. job to do the yeah. ministry. I just have to yield. You just have to yield. Yeah. And we, you know, honestly, for, folks, who, for those of you who are watching, we want to encourage you just to step out. We want to encourage you when you feel, when you sense that leading, that 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 tugging of the Holy Spirit in your heart, whatever He's telling you to do. You are the one who actually carries the presence and the power of the kingdom of God inside of you, which means, Ryan, when they step into an environment, the reality is he has supremacy. He's there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to encourage you as we get ready for our set, second segment, we're going to talk more about stories and we're going to talk about the great things that Holy Spirit does, but become aware of this, okay? We're not asking for God to send the Holy Spirit down again. We are asking, Holy Spirit, make us more aware of this treasure that we've already received who lives inside of us and help us to live, think, act in agreement with the gift of God that we've received called Holy Spirit. Be back in a minute. Welcome back to the Prophetic Edge with Larry Sparks and Ryan Bruss. Ryan, I want you to share how easy it is for us to carry the kingdom of God because like I was telling in the first segment, I read your book, just reading about the stories yeah. and the things that God had you do. And I thought, the thought that I walked away from kind of studying what you did is, God, this is easy. Anybody can do it. Why, perhaps, why, why don't we? Why don't we release the kingdom wherever we go? What, what holds well, back? Well, here's what we got to do. And this is one of my favorite quotes in all the world is by Gypsy Smith, yeah. uh, uh, early 1900 evangelist. He, he, I'm paraphrasing totally, but if, he said basically, if, do you want revival? Yeah. He said, uh, in the old days, he goes. He says, go grab some chalk, draw yourself a circle, get in that circle, get on your knees and say, mm. God, touch everything within that circle. Wow. Wow. And that's it. You got to get in your prayer closet. You got to go after God. If you want, you know, you uh, like like our friend Kevin Zadai uh, yeah, teaches, yeah. you can't pray passion on people. Mm. You got to go get that. Yes. You got to go get the fire. Yeah. You got to go get that uh, zeal for God. Yeah. And uh, it comes from your prayer closet and then it just launches you through. So when, when you start your day in the Holy Spirit, when you start your day in the fire, yeah, yeah. Then, then you go through. You, then when you're talking to your kids before work, you bring the fire, you bring the presence. Yeah, now, I'm yeah. not saying that uh, my son's in the kitchen. I'm like, fire, yeah. you know, <laughs> sometimes that is happening. Well, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because uh, they're kids. But yeah. uh, 
But what we're doing is we're, we're bringing that presence. And yeah. listen, there's a big difference, Larry, between the presence and, and the anointing. Yes, yeah, yeah. And we need more of the presence. There's a lot of anointed people out there yeah. that are not carrying the presence. Mm. The presence is the indicator that you're spending time with Jesus. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, that it you're, is. You're, you're carrying that presence. And that's what makes a difference. You know, people, people walk into their uh, board meeting or a business meeting, and they're like, why does everybody around here look like they don't like me? Yeah. It's because you brought the presence in. Yeah, yeah. And they're living in adultery. They're living a, a sinful lifestyle. And they just already, because you're a Christian, they automatically don't like you. Yeah. And, but all that happens when nobody's looking. Yeah. You get the fire when nobody's looking. You get the passion when nobody's looking. And, and that's where it starts. So come out of your home. Come out of your prayer closet. Or your, wherever you pray, come yeah. out with a fire. Come out with a joy. And then you take that to the world around you. Yeah. And in the book I teach, it's not just the, the streets or, yeah. or the people, and that's all great, and I do all those things, yeah, yeah. but it's the people that you work with, yes. your family, uh, your pastor. You know, just because you're a pastor of a church doesn't mean you don't minister anywhere else. Yes, yeah. You know, you got you to gotta get out there and you got to just uh, let the presence of God just fill you and overflow. Yeah. And, and what happens is when we live to overflow, overflow, that is when we touch the world around us and we don't even realize it. Well, and as you're sharing that, I just want to release this to some folks who are watching. You feel like when you go into your Monday, either you're going to job, you're going to school, you're going to your everyday nine to five, whatever life is for you. And I feel like there's some people who feel like this is menial, this is mundane. I, I, don't, I don't feel like there's a great sense of significance. Am I doing what God has called me to do? And I feel like the Lord's saying, I have you where I have you because I want my presence there. Where does God's presence abide? It is no longer in a box. It's no longer in a tabernacle. It's no longer in a temple. It is in you. Jesus paid a price so that the presence of God could live, dwell within you. And the reality is when you carry your, his presence to those places that you're called to, yeah. like you're talking yeah. about, Ryan, when you show up, I feel like the Lord's saying to tell you, when you show up, be aware that God shows up in you and Absolutely. upon you. And the reality is he wants us to become increasingly aware of the invisible dynamics. I just get that phrase, the invisible dynamics of people who carry God going into places, being in proximity to people. And and that's what it is. It's, it's divine appointments. Yes. See, God will orchestrate the, the day of an individual that needs a healing, a miracle to get saved. He'll orchestrate their whole day just to meet you at the fast food restaurant wow. because you're carrying the presence. And you're kind of just getting through to get your food. And little do you know that the person, I mean, this happened to me the other day, the, the girl at the end of the line, she's crying. Yeah, yeah. I don't need a word from God. No, she, no. She's bawling. That is, but you know what, Ryan, that is worth saying again, because I think so many of us deal with people who are in pain, they're hurting. You don't really need a word of God well, to I jump have, into that. I have to be honest with you. you you've been with me to dinner when yep, yep. that time I ministered to that lady. Yep. And she kept coming back. We ministered a little more, kept coming back. And yes. then I asked her, the Holy Spirit said to me, ask her about her father. Mm. And that's after we had already developed a relationship with yeah, her. Yeah. And I said, can I ask you a personal question? Because we had already yes. developed that relationship. And I said, tell me about your father. She began to break down because her father abused her and so on and so forth. Sometimes you get a word. But I have to tell you, a lot of times I just tell the lady there, Jesus loves you. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I didn't get a word from God or a vision or a dream yeah, or even yeah. an unction from the Holy Spirit yeah. because Jesus loves everybody. Well, and the girl crying in the line. I mean, and obviously girl, needed compassion. And the girl crying in the line, she didn't, I didn't need the Holy Spirit to remind me yeah. that, hey, that's, you're a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, the, the name Christian, is the, the authority is coming back. Wow. I'm a Christian. Yeah. That's yeah. coming back. That's good. But anyway, the, so I went and ministered to the girl and the Lord told me that she was a Christian and she was developed, uh, she had some kind of panic attack going on or something. And I prayed for her and, and uh, uh, God touched her, uh, totally touched her. I saw her a year later. I said, do you remember me? Because <laughs> yeah. I just happened to see her a year later. She goes, yeah. And she told the whole story, how God touched her. But again, there's no word from the Lord. It, God will give divine appointments to you on a regular basis yeah. if you stay filled with his presence. Wow, wow. And that's what, as you're sharing all this, I think this is the life that so many people are aching for. Yes. I, I've got to just share that. So many people are looking to be satisfied and fulfilled. That's not a bad thing. Because God has created within us this longing, a legitimate longing for satisfaction and fulfillment, but it will never be satisfied. Those things will never be filled if the chief end of our lives is just to please ourselves. Yes. But I believe when we give ourselves to what God is calling us to do, and we give ourselves a way to the Lord, but also a way to his purposes, when we say, God, use me, use me like a glove, put me on like a glove. Yeah. 
It's amazing. The life, what you're sharing, you know, sometimes people are like, oh man, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm intimidated. But the lifestyle you're talking about is almost like the life so many people, I'm, I'm just born to live. This is the life of adventure that people are hungry for. Absolutely. And, and here's the key, and I feel to say this right now, yeah. that, is, is that we carry the presence. Yes, it's not just for that person or that person or that person. It's for you. Yeah. You, God wants to fill you with his joy. He wants to fill you with his power. He wants to fill you yeah. with his love. Yes. And, and, and when, when you do that, it changes the way you look at your finances. It changes yes. the way you look at your spouse and your children and just life in general. You said something very interesting. One of the greatest secrets of life, one of the, yeah. by far one of the greatest secrets of life is to know that you're passionately loved by God and a carrier of his presence, even in the mundaneness of life. Isn't that true? Because yeah. most of life is made up of thousands of ordinary moments, yeah. not the mountaintop experiences. No. You know, and so God wants to visit you in, in the mundaneness, in the changing the diapers, mowing the lawn, you know, going to work, and that's where he wants to visit you with his presence. It's true because you can actually offer those things up. Isn't that a powerful reality? You can offer the most trivial, seemingly trivial thing up. Absolutely. And say, God, would you fill this? And Absolutely. he does, and that sanctifies it. And therefore, it's possible that nothing be trivial, mundane, Absolutely. and menial, because God fills it. Absolutely. Would you just pray and minister to the people for a moment and really pray into this whole thing? I feel like God wants to set people on an adventure of carrying his presence. And right now, I feel like there's uh, somebody watching, you have a sadness. There's, mm. there's a sadness or a grief. It's not a grief of a loss. It's a grief of life. Mm. Life has not turned out. Uh, Prince Charming didn't really turn out to be Prince Charming or, or whatever. And, and you, you just feel a sadness. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray yeah. for you. I pray for everyone who's watching that's carrying a burden of life. That's what I feel. Father, that you yeah. begin to lift that off yes. of them right now in Jesus' name because it's the enemy trying to wear you out, mm. burn you out, and so you do not fulfill the call of God on your life. And so right now in Jesus' name, I pray that the fire yeah. of God takes oh. care of all that, yes, set Lord. you free, and I see you. I see you picking up your head. I see I see like mascara, ma'am, running down your face, and now you have a joy. And I yeah. pray that you have a joy, and that joy is going to carry with you the rest of the week. I mean, yeah. you're going to be so full of God, so full of his presence. It's broken off of you now in yeah, Jesus name. In Jesus name. Well, join us in the third segment where Ryan and I are going to minister. We're going to listen to what Holy Spirit says and release that and ignite you to carry his presence. Welcome back to the Prophetic Edge. I'm here with Ryan Bruss, and we just want to pray, prophesy, and minister right now because I believe the Lord wants to release people who carry his presence, carry his kingdom into wherever you're called. You know, Ryan, as soon as I said that, I thought about Jesus. I thought about Jesus who, yes, he's God, obviously, but he also carried the presence of God. Jesus was filled with the same Holy Spirit that you and I have received. And you know what I think of is when Jesus went into certain regions, I just see people right now, when you go into those areas of jurisdiction, when you go into your job, when you go into school, when you go into your family, when you go into places where darkness believe it's, believes it has a claim, because that's the reality right now. We live in a world where there's a lot of chaos, crisis, and darkness believes it has a claim in certain places. Ask yourself this question. What happened when Jesus stepped into those places? Darkness responded to him. Darkness challenged him. Darkness was displaced because the presence of God went into a place and the presence of God in you will always have superiority over the powers of darkness. So recognize you carry that changing atmosphere presence of God. What do you just sense the Lord is saying? Doing well, you right know, now? obviously the Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he does that is in the world. Yeah. In the same man, Jesus, who the son of God, who would disrupt funerals, yeah, who yes. would raise people from the dead, who would cast out devils, who would set people free, who would change destinies. Yeah. That person lives inside of us. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yes. And when you were saying that, I felt the same thing, that the Lord wants to just come in and break the darkness off of people's yeah. families. So yeah. Father, yeah. in Jesus' yes. name, I pray for families that have been in financial darkness, yes. have been in sickness. I see somebody... I, I see a man uh, yeah. and a woman, two different places. I see you on, on your uh, bed of affliction. I see you uh, at home and, and you've, you're having trouble with your, whatever disease or sickness that you're going through. Father, we will break that spirit of infirmity in, yes. the, in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. And I command you to walk. I command you to get up. I see somebody with spots and they're going down as I'm talking. Oh. Uh, Jesus, this is good. Uh, I, I see yeah. your spots. Whatever these le yes. uh, lesions are uh, uh, that are on you, they're going down. And I feel like it's AIDS. 
I feel like somebody with AIDS is being Lord, set free it. right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you just make, you make all things new. You make everything new. You make everything whole. Lord, break that darkness in every home. Lord, everybody going through financial trouble, everybody going with sickness, break that. We yes. break that in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm just seeing right now somebody in a dorm room, somebody in a dorm room in a, in a liberal arts college where it's just very dark. It's not a Christian college. You're in a place, in a school, educational institution. It is dark, but you are just shining bright for the Lord. And you're like, God, it's almost like you're asking God, can I overcome the darkness? And I feel like the Lord's saying to you, no, but the one who lives inside of you can. And I feel like you've been placed in that place, number one, for an assignment, obviously, in terms of your education, but recognize that the spirit of God inside of you is superior to the darkness around you and the places that you go. He's saying, I just want you to be more aware of the presence that you carry, because as you do, how you engage with people will change. How you minister will change. How you share about Jesus will change as you become more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But I just saw somebody watching from a dorm room and then also a woman who's, I, I saw a dryer, a washer and dryer. And it's like you were in that room crying, praying, God, I need you to change the atmosphere of my home. And I feel like the Lord is saying to you, recognize that you have the sanctifying presence of the Holy Spirit inside of you. And I know people will use oil sometimes, they'll do different things, but he's saying, recognize, become aware of the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God inside of you and just pray. He's saying, actually pray from that vantage point. Pray as though you carry and release my presence in that place that is hostile, and you will see a measurable shift take place. What do you? What is what I'm feeling right now? That the Lord is telling me that He wants to restore ministries yeah. and ministers. Whoa! Listen, sir, you may be down, but you're not out. And the devil has lied to you, put shame on you, try to keep you out of the ministry, keep you out of the call of God in your life. And right now, the Lord is restoring ministries. He's restoring you as a minister, man, woman. I am telling you, he's giving you the fire back. He's bringing, I see, I see uh, from your innermost being, I see hope rising. Mm. And he's calling you back to the ministry. He's saying, go out there and do what I've called you to do. Get up. Get going, get moving, and do exactly what I've placed in your heart to do. You, you may have been knocked out, but wow. you're not. I'm telling you, God is restoring, and he's bringing you out of that mess. And I see it's like, oh. um, it's like seaweed on you, just all these things like hanging on you. You're breaking yeah. free yeah. of all that stuff so you can run with God and run the race that he's put in front of you. Yeah, I'm seeing right now somebody who feels like, you, you, you know the Lord, you made a decision for Jesus. Maybe you've experienced God in some dynamic, powerful ways, but right now you feel, I feel distant. I feel disconnected from him, from his voice, from his presence. It's not like it used to be. And here's what the Lord is saying to you. I, wow, he's saying, remember the fire. I feel like God is speaking yeah. to you right now. He's saying, remember the fire. And you're like, what does that mean? Remember when he touched you. Yeah. Because there's actually still a residue of anointing on that memory. This is not some bizarre thing. When you read throughout the scriptures, particularly Old Testament, time after time, we are called to remember the works of the Lord. Yeah. Not just to fill our mind with information, but there's literally an impartation and an anointing still on that memory of the last time you've tasted and experienced the fire of God. And that will reignite that. Ryan, any final things? Yes, that... I just want to say that the Lord wants you to be the move of God. Don't yeah. talk about yes. the move of God. You can read about you can read about it, but be the move of God. You carry the presence. You carry the faith. Now go out there. Be revival. Be the move of God everywhere you go. Yeah. Well, we pray right now, Father God, for everybody who's watching. And my prayer is this. Open the eyes of our understanding. Help us to understand who we carry. Paul talks about how we're vessels of clay. In other words, we're just all frail human beings that you, you God, you made us. We're, we're intricately designed and we're beautifully made. Yes. But God, we all deal with our issues and our failures and our things that we stumble over, but you chose yes. us to be vessels to carry your presence. So Lord, here's my prayer for everyone watching. My prayer for Brian in my life, God, I don't want to cry out for another move of God. I don't want to cry out for the Holy Spirit to come down out of heaven. One man's going to come down out of heaven one day, and it's Jesus. The Holy Spirit has already been sent. He has been released and given to us in the earth. So here's our prayer, my prayer over you. Father, open our eyes. Yes, son. Open our eyes to what and who we've received, the power of God dwelling within us, and help us to live like we actually have God living on the inside of us. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Prophetic Edge. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Prophetic Edge with today's guest, Ryan Bruss. We'd love to hear from you. Please send us your questions or comments by going online to god.tv forward slash edge.
You can also re-watch today's episode or any other program in this series at god.tv forward slash edge. Be a part of bringing content like this to the outer ends of the world. Go to god.tv to become a God TV media missionary today.